Hey everyone, welcome to another Raspberry Pi Ultimate Robot Tutorial. Today we are going to learn how to get an input from a keyboard and send it to our robot. We will make our keyboard called modular which means it will be a separate file that will send signals to our main robot code. We will also see how we can link this to our motor module to send movement commands. There are a lot more modules to come for this robot series so do subscribe if you like to see more and give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. So let's get started. So next we are going to write our keyboard module in which we are going to get the key presses uh, so that we can actually run the robot. So let's go ahead and create a new file. So we will stop this, we will create a new file and we will save it as cre key press module. So to detect our key press, we are going to use a package or a library by the name Pygame. Now this is mainly used for making games, but today we are going to use it to detect key presses and run our robot. So to install it, you can go to the terminal and over here you can write sudo, then you can write pip3 install pygame. And that's how simple it is. So I have already installed it. So it said that the requirement already satisfied. Now here we have the very basic code to detect a key press. What we are doing here is we are creating a window. We are initializing our Pi game and we are creating a window uh, of 100 by 100 size. Now the reason we are creating a window is because we cannot detect the key press unless we have a window to detect on. Then we are getting all the events uh, and then from that event we are detecting the get pressed event. So whenever something is pressed it will check that and within that we are going to check that which key was pressed. Now in order to check that we can simply say that if key input has pi game dot and then you can write k underscore uh, k stands for key underscore and the key value which is a in this case. So for example I can write uh, b or if I wanted to check left and right I can write left. So what we can do is we can simply write it like this and then if if that is true it will run this statement. So if I run that now and at the end we are updating our window. So if I run this now in the console you can see this is our small window 100 by 100 and in the console if I press A you can see it says key A was pressed. If I keep pressing it you can see it keeps detecting it. If I press anything else it will not understand. So this is good but the problem here is that what we want is the user to input a value of which key you want to test. So here we want to define a function. So for example we can say define and we can write get key and inside we want to write the name of the key. So let's let's just uh, write So we will write this again so that we can run and test this module as well. So we can write underscore main initialize. Let's create this as the initialization function. So define initialization and this will be our initialization. We will initialize and then we will run a while loop while true you have to run the main and here we can define our main define main and we can write here if gets key which is this get key uh, and we can send in the value for example we want to check if the a key was pressed 
then we will print uh, key A was pressed and the same way if we were to check the key number B then we can just write B here and then we can say the key B was pressed now the problem right now is that we can send this value here but it will not understand because the key name we cannot put it here so the thing that we have to change to check this is this variable here now this is a method that we are writing here so how can we change this from a variable so if we are sending the key name here how can we put key name instead of a so that is the question so to do that what we can do we can write my key is equals to get attribute and what we will do is we will write pi game and then we will write k underscore and then instead of writing a we are going to write a bracket so this value will go in this bracket how can we make sure of that we can write format and inside that we can write key name key name and we can close the brackets so what this will do is it will check the key name and it will format it like this so it will say pi game dot k underscore a if the value over here was a if the value here was b it will say pi game dot k underscore b so we can replace all of this by my key and we can return the value return So let's say that we, our answer is equals to false. Initially, the key is not pressed. And if the key was pressed, we will say answer is equals to true. And we will return answer. So if I run this now, okay, I forgot this. If I run this now and I press A, it will say A was pressed. If I press B, it will say B was pressed. So now I can send in the values of whatever I need and it will return whether it was true or false. So whether it was pressed or not. So I can also write here left and I can write here right and I can run that. But I need to change this. So if I run this now and if I press the right key, right was pressed, left and I can do it really fast and it will respond as quickly as it can. So now what we can do is we can go back to our main module and then we can import this over there. So we can say in our robot main we can say import key press module as kp because we don't want a very long name so we will just say it has kp so next we will uh, actually uh, manage our main module as well so we should write the same thing here so we will copy this and we will write here main and we will put it in a loop we will create our main function so define main So here we will put all the settings. So the first thing we have to do is we have to initialize our, uh, what do you call, uh, the initialization function. For the pi game to initialize and create a window so the first thing we will do is we will say that kp kp dot initialize and then we can run our 
get key function so we can say get key and then we can get whatever key we require so over here let's just comment these two out we can write here kp dot get key and we can write here for example s and we can print this value directly to see if it's working so prints s so it will tell me whether s was pressed or not so if we run this now and if i press the s key you can see it changes from false to true and if i do it quickly it changes as well so now we are able to run our key press code in our main code so what we can do next is we can detect our key presses of up down and uh, we can also use wasd and then based on that we can send some values to the motor so let's do that so we will keep this as the test code so we will comment this out and this is also the test code so we can comment this out we can write if our key is up if that is pressed then we are going to say that motor dot move at let's say 60% of the speed with zero amount of turn and move it for zero point let's say 0 0.1 seconds then we will say that we will copy this and we will write this for down and we will change this to minus 0 0.6 and let's run that so if i press the up button it will go forward if i press the down button it will go backwards but the issue right now is that uh, it keeps moving because we didn't tell it to stop so we will say that if up do this if down let me stop that so what we can say is that if it's up do this else do this otherwise else we are going to say motor dot stop and again for 0 0.1 second so this way if i run it again if i press forward it goes forward if i keep pressing now it will go forward if i release it will stop if i press down it will go back and if i release it will stop so the same thing we can do with left and right here we can say left and here we can say right so then the motor move here we are going to say that we are going forward at 0. Point, let's say 5 0. 0.5 and here we are turning 0. 0.3 and here we are turning 0. 0.3 but minus so if we run that and let me press so yeah so both the left and the right they are working now now you might say that uh, we did all of this work of normalization our values and now we are using them as binaries it's just on and off so we are not actually uh, increasing the turn or decreasing the turn or increasing or decreasing the speed we are just giving it a constant speed and that is correct because we are using a keyboard next what we are going to do is we are going to run it with a ps4 controller when we are using that we will have an analog stick in which we can have 
uh, greater speed or lower speed, we can adjust the amount of turn. In that case, this uh, normalization will be really helpful because the joystick actually gives values from minus one to one for forward and backwards and minus one to one for uh, left and right. So we can directly map these values to our controller and it should work fine.